Hey, what's up everybody? Sorry that took a little bit longer to get things going here this morning. Kind of brushing off the dust here as we ramp up in the hurricane season this morning. Hey, what's up How are you so far today? Um, honestly, a really nice start here in Tampa Bay. Hopefully, wherever you're watching this morning, you've got a nice start to your Wednesday morning as well. So, uh, a lot to talk about here. I do just want to start off by saying happy first day of hurricane season. It's been quite the buildup. I remember back 100 days ago, we started the countdown. And, and now here we are at um, a T minus zero for um, the start of hurricane season. And once you know it, we're already tracking something. Just a quick note for um, hurricane season. Again, it begins today on June 1st. It's going to last all the way through the next six months. So we see the peak of hurricane season on September 10th. That's when we typically see the most activity in the tropical Atlantic. And then the activity gradually dies down, not to say that we can't have an intense storm, but the frequency of those tropical systems does begin to go down through October, certainly into November, and then the hurricane season officially wraps up on November 30th. However, as we know, you can still get a tropical system outside of those bounds of June 1st to November 30th. So. The, that's the season that we're in right now. We are officially here. Um, the forecast from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is forecasting for an above average season, 14 to 21 named storms, 6 to 10 hurricanes, 3 to 6 of those hurricanes becoming major hurricanes, that being a cat 3, 4, or 5. Our average is a little bit higher there at 14 named storms, 7 hurricanes, and 3 major hurricanes. That, that number got increased last year as we welcomed in a new batch of um, averages to come in with the new decade that we entered in so activity has been up and and certainly that's what we're seeing already this year uh, just a quick note the the list of the names for the 2022 hurricane season in the Atlantic will start off with Alex um, again that that upper range of the forecast from NOAA saying that we could use all of these names if not more but the the upper end was that 21 name storms which would use up all of those names on the list all right Let's talk about what we have out there this morning. Two areas that we're watching, one of which is there off the east of the Bahamas, and then another developing there over the Yucatan Peninsula, actually just now beginning to try to move into the northwestern Caribbean. More on that in just a second, but that system there east of the Bahamas, only a 10% change of development, so not really concerned about that one. Obviously, all eyes are going to be on this uh, really the remnants of what was Hurricane Agatha that made landfall on the Pacific coast of Mexico uh, a couple days ago and now those uh, remnant or leftovers if you will have been slowly moving across South Mexico kind of drifting now over the eastern Yucatan Peninsula once it moves back over water it'll have the fuel to begin to redevelop and likely become a tropical depression maybe later today but most likely by tomorrow and then we'll see how it organizes as it tracks to the north and east as it makes its way through the southeastern gulf of mexico into potentially the southern half of the florida peninsula through uh, friday into saturday just a couple of notes here looking at the satellite imagery this morning you see a lot of that thunderstorm activity developing over the um, just off the, the west of the east coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. So right there is where we're seeing that thunderstorm activity. There is a little bit of circulation around that thunderstorm activity. We'll see if that holds. Um, there's also a little bit of that, well, there's a low pressure system up in the, U in the Bay of Campeche as well. This is probably the one that's gonna win out. This is what a lot of the forecast models are saying with this. There is overall a broad area of circulation going on here. So if you look closely you can kind of see how we're working with a a broader circulation or a, a gyre that we call that um, that's why we see these little spins that try to develop um, with these thunderstorms that pop up but on the whole it looks like we're going to get probably that surface circulation to redevelop there just near um, well south of Cozumel in the western Caribbean and then it should start to lift to the north and then it'll start getting picked up by more westerly winds and, and we'll drag it to the north and east. Just looking at a different satellite color table, you can see some of those thunderstorms a little bit better. Um, those thunderstorms really firing up through the overnight hours, drifting to the east, and then we'd likely see that sur surface circulation somewhere 
in there. So we'll see how that pans out as we go through the day today. Something that we're going to be watching as well. Uh, this is a look at the contours of the sea surface temperatures. So these sea surface temperatures, or if you will, just the ocean temperatures at the surface of the water, so where the water meets the air. Um, it's really warm, but not only is it really warm, but we've got the loop current, which the loop current is a naturally occurring process where you have this current of water, think about it as a river in the water, that pulls up all the warmth out of the Caribbean, and it has this current that loops up into the northern Gulf, and then it curves back around into ultimately what becomes the Gulf Stream that shoots up the east coast of Florida. This loop current is actually pushing a little bit more north, so there's a lot of warm water, not only at the surface, but it extends pretty deep too. So this is a pool of energy for potential tropical systems to strengthen as they move across. Now what's interesting about the loop current is you get these little, you know, almost like lava lamp bulbs that move up into the Gulf, and then a little eddy or a little ball of that current will break off from the, the rest of the current, and then it will drift to the west. And you can kind of see an old piece of that over there in the Yucatan or the Bay of Campeche and into the east coast of Mexico. So we're, what we're working with right now is a pretty tall area of warm, deep water in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. So it will be interesting to see how this system interacts with that loop current and does it strengthen? Does it really have no effect? Because we, we have some wind shear that's, that's shooting across the Gulf as well. And that's probably going to keep it from developing too quickly. But when you have that warm ocean water, uh, again, that's the fuel for these systems to strengthen. So it very well could prove to be uh, a good ignition for that development of that low pressure system. Uh, let me show you one of the forecast models here right now. This is the GFS model. So again, kind of dusting off our, our tropical terminology here. This GFS model is the American model, one of the, the many global forecast models that we use to help us forecast and, and figure out where these systems are going to track. The, 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 the GFS model really has been the weaker solution of a lot of these forecast models in the last several days. And it's been keeping the system relatively south. So you see going into Friday afternoon, it, it still brings heavy rainfall down toward Marco Island, Naples area, and obviously the Keys and Miami as well. But here in Tampa Bay, really on the fringe of that shield of precipitation, whereas areas north of the I-4 corridor if this were to pan out exactly as the model is suggesting, may not get any rain from this system. This is Friday, and then as we go through Friday afternoon, Friday night into Saturday morning, you see there's that transfer as the system continues to the east-northeast, maybe strengthening a little bit as it moves back over the Gulf Stream there, just east of Miami, and then the system continues to move out towards the east, and, and we're enjoying the second half of our weekend, uh, especially here in Tampa Bay with most of these sunny skies. Now, the European forecast model, again, one of the other global forecast models, is basically starting off in the same place as the American model, all right? So it's it's somewhere there off the east coast of the Yucatan and the Western Caribbean, tracking to the north. As we go through the day today, we might see some development, maybe more so in tomorrow as that circulation really develops and it moves over those warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean. So this is Friday afternoon. Um, maybe a little bit slower initially with the development from the U from the European model, and we would you know maybe begin to see some precipitation arrive here in Tampa Bay going into Friday afternoon. This would just be rain, guys. Um, I really don't even think we see a lot of wind picking up with this through Friday afternoon. Maybe as we go into the day on Saturday, as that low pressure system begins to approach. Now the European model does bring the system a little bit farther to the north, and not only that though. It also brings it in a little bit stronger as well. Maybe an upper end depression, low end tropical storm. We're not talking about a hurricane at this point, but there may be some strengthening as it approaches the Florida coast, at least according to the European model. Again, we have some wind shear that'll be pushing a lot of those storms off to the east. In fact, if you look at this and you, you really draw a line, so this is a, a north to south line right here, a lot of the storms you see are on the east side of the storm, and that's that upper level wind shear literally blowing all the thunderstorms to the east. So as we approach Friday night into Saturday, even with this solution, it would keep a bulk of the rain on the east side. So as the storm 
advances to the east through Saturday afternoon, we would see clearing conditions pretty rapidly. Dry air on the back side, you're looking at Saturday evening, you might even have a nice sunset. Given this scenario, which looks to be the worst case scenario, which still isn't even really that bad, but it would continue to the east, probably more of an east coast event, uh, and maybe even strengthening further from there off the southeast coast of South Carolina and North Carolina. But obviously at that point, um, not a concern for us, but it would be something to watch for potential development and kind of fringe impacts into the Carolina coast and to the Outer Banks as well. So just a couple of model solutions that we're seeing right now. Just th this is comparing the, the surface pressure for the European and the GFS model here. The yellow is the European model. So you see into Friday evening, it starts to pull a little bit more to the north. And then the divergence in the track leads us through the day on Saturday with more of that southerly weaker track with the GFS model and the European model. Um, they're going to the north, kind of oh, maybe a little south of the I-4 corridor, which would mean the worst of the impacts would still be south of Tampa Bay. Um, we would see generally um, offshore winds um, through the event. So a surge isn't really a concern, just a rain event, maybe some breezy conditions with some gusty winds through Saturday morning, early afternoon-ish with everything beginning to calm down into Saturday evening. So here's where we are right now. Um, we're looking at a, a likely a tropical depression by Friday, if not into Thursday. I think Thursday is a very real possibility that we could see a tropical depression develop, maybe a tropical storm by Friday. It would be named Alex. Uh, we are saying an increased threat for some rain through Friday into the day on Saturday. But honestly, if you've been in the Bay Area, specifically I-75 West for the last couple of afternoons, we've had some pretty wicked weather. Severe storms, we had a couple of tornadoes touched down yesterday. I really don't expect any of the impacts to come from this system to be any worse than what we've seen for the last couple of days with those afternoon and evening showers and storms. Now, obviously, there's still some uncertainty in that forecast because, I mean, look, the system hasn't even developed yet, right? I mean, that low pressure system is still in the works. It has to develop, and we have to have that starting point for the models to be able to say, okay, this is where we start so we can figure out where we're going to go. So until that surface low pressure system actually establishes itself and we can say, all right, start here, go, um, still some uncertainty in that. But I think by this time tomorrow, we should have a better handle on where this is all going to go and, and ultimately where it goes, I think will help dictate how strong the system gets and, and what type of impacts we're going to be working with. Um, not just what type, but, but who sees those impacts, because I think it could be a pretty sharp gradient between who gets some heavy rainfall over South Florida and then where that cutoff is going to be for maybe just a couple of light showers or maybe nothing at all into Friday and Saturday. So that's where we stand here on our Wednesday morning as we ramp up into hurricane season. Again, hurricane season officially starting today, lasting all the way through <laughs> the month of November. So a, uh, a long season ahead with potentially up to 21 named storms if you're if you're going by the uh, the National Hurricane Center's and uh, NOAA's forecast. So something that we're watching, of course, and we'll keep you posted. More info is always available on 10tampabay.com as well as our free 10 Tampa Bay app. You can follow me on social media as well. I'm putting posts up as, as much as I can as, though up, as those updates come down from the National Hurricane Center or from the new model run. So we're going to be tracking this thing all the way through. You guys have a great Wednesday and keep checking back for more updates. Take care.